Guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me in Kerbal Space Program, and you may be wondering from what you can see right now, why the Space Center looks so different. Well, this is the new rescaled solar system, which is absolutely amazing. Um, the reason it looks so different right now is because this is um, the launch facility at Cape Canaveral. That is one of the uh, main launch facilities in the US um, of this a world that looks a lot like this. Yes, basically, it has been updated so that it is very real-worldy, so that it is not only the same size as, um, what is this, uh, is it so that, uh, Kerbin is not only the same size as Earth, but the same texture. Additionally, there's this little thing, launch sites, you can pick your launch site, so say I want to go to, I, Kazakhstan, I think that is, um, the Baikonur, uh, Baikonur. Yeah, that's where the Soyuz... How do you pronounce that? I've heard that so many times. I swear to God, that's where the uh, Soyuz launched from. It'll take a little while to not look terrible. But yeah, this is the... Uh, I've completely forgotten how to... Uh, apparently, I'm clicking on... Re it's still very glitchy, so I'll click on that. and it, Oh, no. There you go. Um, oh, no. Apparently, that's the wrong way. Yeah, okay. Let's put something on the wrong way so I can show you where this is. Oh, Jesus. Uh, apparently that's R and D. Um, okay, everything is research and development. So I can very glitchy still, but yeah, you can do all of those things. And I think my favourite site is Cape Canaveral, just because that's where SpaceX tends to launch from. There is also Vandenberg. Let's see if that works any better. Um, so yeah, they've redone the texture for that. They've also redone the texture for the moon, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, which looks quite moon-like. Yeah, this is Vandenberg. Um, again, uh, th I think this is less glitchy. But uh, yeah, so if I put something on the pad, you can see where... Um, you'll be able to see where it is um, on Earth. Which is pretty cool. All of this is really awesome. And I think they've done maybe more moving around of... Oh, oh yeah! Again, now they've put uh, Kerbin, um, okay, how do I explain this? So, okay, well, as are all of, as most of you hopefully will know, um, Earth, Earth's axis is tilted relative to its orbit around the sun, um, which will be easily explained uh, visually in a little bit. But yeah, but this is Vandenberg, so I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to Cape Canaveral and then I'll explain some things from there. Uh, but yeah, so Earth's now now it's finally tilted on its axis, so it makes it just a lot awesomer. And because there's lots of launch facilities, it makes it less restricting having a like a tilted Earth. Um, so, okay, so back to Cape Canaveral. Good. Oh no, I need to be in that facility. God damn it! I wanted to show you the moon. This is a this video is going well so far. Um, but yeah, I need to get back to that facility to show you. Because I will not be flying to everywhere in the solar system because I don't have the uh, skill um, with the real world. Yeah, I could probably. I landed on the moon. You could go check that out. That's a series I did. But yeah, so obviously you've got your Earth. Um, you've got your moon. I'll try and focus on that. Yeah, there you go. Um, proof that I landed on the moon. There's a flag. Uh, moon. Uh, I mean, moon landing. Now it actually is the moon. Look at it. It's hardcore. Look how awesome this looks. It's all real and stuff. And the sun is up there as opposed to on the um, equator. Oh, yeah. So because um, everything's everything's uh, tilted more. So, yeah, when I'm looking at this, uh, looking at it, looking at Kerbin like this, I'm trying to kind of explain this with words, but it's probably not going very well. But this is uh, looking at Kerbin, uh, Kerbin 90 degrees. So the North Pole goes up. Okay, it's not capturing my mouse. One second. Um, we're gonna try and need my mouse for this. There you go, I think. Okay, my mouse is probably here, but um, basically, if you go above Kerbin, that's where the poles are. So it, everything's very inclined, which is very cool. If you want to know more about the rest of the solar system, I did do another video on the old version you can go check out. But right now, I'm going to actually launch something because, well, it'll be a pretty terrible video without a launch. Um, you know, anyway, uh, so I will be launching, uh, clear that, the iron powered space probe still on the pad, because that's 
it's still in a lot of working. So I'm going to launch my TMOV Mark One. The uh, what is it called? Um, tape manned orbital vehicle Mark One. It is on my best rocket, my two-stage rocket, which has no boosters. That was my crowning achievement in the series, uh, other than landing on the moon. I had to use a Falcon Heavy type thing for landing on the moon. Uh, yeah, so, throttle up. Uh, this could take a little while, maybe I'll cut some bits out, but probably not. It takes off quite slowly, because uh, I doesn't need to go in that fast. Um, I'm going to head into about 80 degree orbit relative to here, because I thought that would be fun. Obviously, Jebediah Kerman is at the helm. Who else would be able to fly this? Um, he's doing all the work. But yeah, I just... This is just such a step up from just, Hey, look, Kerbin's big now. It's like, hey, look, there's all these different launch sites. It's like being in the real world. It's like, ooh. It is so cool. Um, in uh, Insanely interesting space news. Uh, actually, lots of interesting SpaceX news. Um... The, one of the recent, uh, they did another one of their grasshopper tests, which they started doing with an actual main stage. Basically, if you don't know, grasshopper is SpaceX's, um, I've said this in so many videos now, but basically grasshopper is SpaceX's um, test uh, test vehicle for f um, landing a main stage. So basically they fly it up to a certain altitude and land it. Um, now they've started doing it with their actual main stage, which has landing legs now. Um, and they did a one kilometer jump, which is unbelievably awesome. Uh, additionally, even more awesomely, on their last mission to the space station, they uh, soft landed a stage on the ocean, their main stage, that soft landed. That is the first time that's ever happened. It was destroyed by the stormy seas, and and it's not like, oh yeah, that's a cover up, because when they asked people to go out, not even the Coast Guard would go out, the sea was so bad, so that's why it was destroyed. Um, but they have found bits of it, so next time they'll be slowly honing in their aim with uh, their reusable rockets. If I haven't mentioned that, they are working on reusing rockets to cut down the price of um, uh, cut down the price of using reflying rockets. Because uh, um, then you only have to, if you can reuse the rocket, you uh, you only have to pay for propellant, and that's about 0.3 percent of the cost. Uh, and it is going to be fully and rapidly reusable, because the shuttle was partially reusable, and it took 10 months and 10,000 people to reuse. So, and I think that ended up costing more than the shuttle itself, so it was the, it, it wasn't a great vehicle. Um, but it was, it, you know, let us build the space station, which is good. But yeah, I have, that is just SpaceX is actually going to be uh, just, just making reusable rockets, it's actually a thing. Um, which is very difficult for lots of reasons, which would take me a while to explain. I may do a video on it. Um, jeez, I'm coldy, so I don't know why it's, I've got a cold. It's freaking summer. Maybe it's hay fever or something. Oh, I should be tilting over so much more. Okay. Jeez, I haven't really been paying attention. I find it very hard to fly rockets in the real world and talk about it. Uh, but yeah, SpaceX, check their stuff out. Okay. Um... Actually, I could probably keep talking about them because, I mean, this is going to go on for a while. Ditch the fairings. I'm taking a little, little uh, manned pod into um, orbit. Uh, people have been asking me, well, people, more like two people, uh, have been asking me about uh, what I'm going to do with rescale curving. Because I did my whole uh, Project Moon series and then almost did a, um, what was it? I, al I almost made uh, rescaled Kerbin Space Station series, which I kind of want to do, but um, it takes up a lot of time, and I don't have time for that, because it was like, with the Rescale Kerbin Project Moon, it would take me a week to develop each thing, and it's not like, um, and it would literally be just trying to get the launch vehicle to work, because it was so difficult. That one actually took me to the moon, that was, that was really difficult, I had to resort to some, uh, pretty, I, I didn't, because I could, you could easily do it if you did like a big asparagus stage thing, but if you're going to be using rescale Kerbin, you kind of want to be doing realistic launch vehicles or it's no fun, so I, it looked like an asparagus stage launch vehicle, but it was actually more like Falcon Heavy type setup. You can go check that out if you haven't seen it, uh, there'll probably be a link on screen right now, or you can just go to check out my channel if there isn't one. Um, yeah, but obviously, uh, 
the orbital velocity around Kerbin, uh, Earth even, is a lot higher than orbital velocity around Kerbin, because Kerbin is about 2200 meters a second. Um, whereas uh, Earth, it's about 7400 meters a second, or at least it is on the game right now. Um, so it'll take me a while to get up to speed. And I'm using KW engines and stretchy tanks because nothing else is up to the task, really. Um, these are very efficient and provide a decent amount of thrust. More like real engines. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, back to SpaceX. Um, I just... I forgot what I was going to... Oh yeah, no. By the end of the year, they hope to have honed in their landing position on the ocean so much so that they can actually land on land because they have landing legs and they have clearance if it's proven that they can do it without hitting cities and stuff. Um, so that'll be awesome and the next year they plan to recover one. I mean it might take a little longer but it's going really fast in the right direction. Um, I'm just gonna uh, do my cool thing. Um, but yeah no it's going really fast in the right direction and uh, the thing is because no one else is really it Falcon 9 is the only rocket designed fully in the 21st century, which is ridiculous because they're still using like old uh, old Lord vehicles and old Russian engines, like the Delta rockets. They still use um, like engines designed in the 90s, and even some of the bits were designed in the 70s, and that's why they cost so damn much. So if uh, SpaceX managed to, because a lot of people still don't use SpaceX, even though it's cheaper because, well, there's lots of other launch vehicles that, I mean, it's still logical to use some other launch vehicles for things, but if they make reusable rockets, or at least reuse the first stage, that'll cut down the price by about 70%. Um, well, actually, no, it'll cut, yeah, it'll be a ridiculous amount cheaper, and if they cut down, um, uh, and, and yeah, so it'll be about 70% cheaper, so it'll be completely illogical to use any other launch vehicle. Um, and when they bring up Falcon Heavy, that'll be the heaviest lifter ever. So if that's reusable and cheaper, and we're almost in orbit, and and the heaviest launch vehicle ever, then there will be really no reason to use any other launch vehicle. So everyone will have to make their launch vehicles better, so it will push us into the 21st century. But now we are in orbit. A little eccentric orbit. Well, it's cut off at the exact same time. Thank God SpaceX are doing stuff. That gave me time to talk. It gave me stuff to talk about. But anyway, we are in orbit. I just thought I'd show that. And because we launched from Cape Canaveral, it's an eccentric orbit because uh, you're not doing an equatorial launch. Um, this launch vehicle performed pretty well. And then we can ditch that. And then we've got our little pod with 11 days of life support, a little solar panel. I used the KW flag because uh, none of this would be possible without KW rocketry. Um, Oh yeah, we're gonna. So the orbital velocity here is about 7,800 meters a second, and then I've got RCS, which can fly me out very far, actually. Um, but anyway, uh, I think that's about it, because they've updated a few things. They've changed how the solar system is laid out. They've changed how Kerbin looks, how the moon looks. They've put a bunch more launch sites in. Yeah, I think that's summarizing it pretty well. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you've learned about SpaceX from the kind of. You know, I, I you run out of things to talk about in Rescale Kerbin because I kind of covered it at the start of the video. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed me rambling about SpaceX. Uh, if you have liked this video, feel free to like this video. Uh, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.